Hi, everyone. Okay. Oh my God. It is okay. First, let me tap in. It is so, well, that just looks weird. Like I got a big old bug on me. It is so sultry out here. I had to go get a tea towel <laughs> to keep myself from being too um, gross. <laughs> no other way to say it. Okay, let me just, you know, like right now I'm covering my beautiful greenery and all you see is this seedling area. So hold on. Okay. Mm. Ah, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I just gave uh, anyone who was with me a little tour of my little nursery here. I, um, you know, I spend a lot of time out here in this time of year where it's up to the 90 and super humid. I'm like, whew, a lot of energy draining out of my body in the way of sweat and a lot of earth joining my body in the way of dirt. So um, that's okay. <laughs> so um, hi, Kat. Hello. Thanks for joining. So today in the uh, Harness Your Inner Fire series, and you know what, while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and put the link if you um, want to enjoy the whole series, ah, here we go. I accidentally clicked on a tab instead of, okay. If you wanna enjoy the whole series, uh, I just put in the link to it so you can see the previous videos. They're all free, they're on my website, they're free. This entire program is free because um, with everything going on in our planet these days, um, it's really important that as many of us as possible become like master energizers, master healers, master manifestors, just like masters of our own being. So we're learning to work our chakras and there we go. So, um, we have been exploring, like, um, hi, Veada. Uh, we have been exploring the different ways of using our chakras to support each other. It's important to remember each chakra, it's not just a glowing ball of energy. It is a mandala all on its own because it's all these little points. A chakra is where two lines connect and they spark. So the we have like thousands of chakras in our body, plus the energy outside of our body. Those of you who study prana shakti with me know that or are there on Wednesday nights when I channel the Akashic librarians, you know, they're very open about the fact that our physical body is just the densest part of our actual earth life body that we have an energetic structure around us and um, that most of us aren't even aware of. It's just the physical body is where, it's like a, our physical body is a chakra, it is a mandala. It's where there's the most compressed energy of the body. But our body, our energetic structure is also around us. So we have chakras not just in our body, but a, or in our physical body, but also around our physical body. And each chakra is in its way a mandala because, no, let me say each major chakra is actually a mandala because it's not just a glowing orb of energy. It's where so many chakras are crisscrossing so close together and harmoniously that they are creating this extra spark, this glowing orb of energy. That's not just glowing, it's sending energy every which way. That's a mandala. So what we call chakras are actually mandalas and what we call nothing, are, because we didn't necessarily know about them, are actually chakras. Uh, oh my God, I'm just seeing how much dirt is all over my arms. I'm so filthy and 
kind of bruised up and scraped, but oh well. Um, you guys will forgive me, I'm sure, since today we're connecting with Earth. So um, we have chakras in and out of our body. We have mandalas in our body. Our body is a mandala and the energy around our body is also a mandala that we are one component of. So we can think of ourselves as flowing with greater abundance than just the compressed little line of energy flowing up and down. This is why I've been building Hi Kit Cloud Kicker, one of my favorite names in the universe. Um, one of the reasons I've been teaching this class is so that we get out of the concept of, okay, align your chakras and now energy is flowing up and down. That is only one frequency of energy through our body. We have thousands of ways of flowing energy through our body. Each what we call chakra, each mandala of energy, glowing powerhouse of energy can support any action. And we can send the energy any which way we want through our system. You know, think of it as though your physical body is an inner city roadmap. And the energetic body around you that is still as much a part of you is the suburbs and the rural areas. So if you are downtown and you want to go to visit your friend at a farm, there might be eight different routes that you can easily take to get there. One might take a little longer. One might be like really quick, but you got to pay a toll. Another one might be just beautiful and scenic, but you got to follow, <laughs> be very aware of which way you go. Another one is the quickest way to get there, but the most boring way to get there. You know, it's the same. We are like, we have these roadmaps to our energy and our systems. And most of us, we just go the same way all the time, same way all the time, because we don't think about all that we can do to just like play with our frequencies. So that's something to think about. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Such lovely comments. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. If you have any questions about what I'm saying, please feel welcome to share them. So the energy that flows right through the middle that we think of as, oh, align your chakras. This is like our core energy. Most of us don't get all the way into the core energy. We stay with the sheath of the core energy. Because when you get to the actual core energy, you're connecting with your soul. This is the purest frequency where you in your core physical being connects with your soul. Most of us do not get all the way to that core. We stay in the sheath around it where the soul is connecting to your physical body. So if you think of like a pipe of water and the pipe is flowing with beautiful, refreshing water, but it's a little bit, uh, mosquitoes, I'm sorry. I know we're not supposed to kill other beings, but mosquitoes, uh. So maybe the pipe is a little bit porous. So all you do is you get whatever water seeps out of it. It's not that much unless you really pull it out. Maybe you get little plumbing and stuff to siphon the water out. But if you want the really good stuff, all you have to do is go into the core of the pipe and there's the water. It's the same. We are always connected to our soul and flowing into our core being is our soul's energy. I'm gonna get it further on that in a moment. The soul's energy, I think it has maybe a little rind around it where it's connecting with your energy or a filtration process where it's connecting. So we tap into that and we think of it to power up our energy centers, especially into the major energy centers, because those then go and pump energy to all the minor or smaller energy centers, right? So this process makes absolute sense. And it's so useful, bring in the divine energy, fill up your chakras and the chakras are again very active 
and then invite them to send energy all through your body. This is a brilliant system that we designed for ourselves way back when. However, most of us don't think about the fact that we are in life as our souls designed us to be. So I'm going to say me, each of you, Amar, Kit, Veada, Kat, all of us. Once upon a time, we were just energy attached to our soul. So I'm going to use myself as an example so no one feels called out, but apply what I'm saying to you. So once upon a time, I'm my soul. And I'm like, hmm, I have some karmic lessons I need to learn. Or, hmm, I feel like the planet needs my help. Or some group comes up to me and says, Benita, we want to incarnate and we want you to be part of some sort of process like, be our mother or be a mentor or be a protagonist or have a soul contract that we know you will not forget about that will definitely be honored who knows what but for whatever reason it is determined by my soul that i will come and incarnate as a life so then i'm okay the first soul contract that must be honored is your mother because your mother needs to create you to be born uh some have a strong father soul contract some not some the contract is the father will impregnate your mother and wander away some is that he'll you know who knows what here's the thing your parents may not end up being the parents they contracted to you may have contracted to have loving supportive parents that are doing great and said they might be, you know, near to wells or abusive or unsupportive. Like there's no guarantee that the life path you plan and the soul contracts you make will be honored. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that in a second. However, you planned for certain experiences. So you have built a lot of energy around these experiences happening. So if things don't come to fruition the way you plan, you have backup plans. On top of that, you have a magnetic energy. Hi, Shelly. You have a magnetic energy created that you're putting out, an ambiance, an aura, a, an energetic structure around your body that attracts what it is that you had hoped to have in your life. So there's more ways than one for your life path to go as you wish and need it to go. It still doesn't always happen. Sometimes like this is it and you just veer off that way. Then you have a different life experience. Um, Mitzi, he's barking at someone. So, um, So that being said, the person you are is the person that your soul designed to be most likely to manage the life path that you plan for yourself and the karmic lessons or the soul contracts that you need for this life to go according to mission. Which, you know, that means you are perfect exactly as you are because you are as you designed yourself to be. So all the time, like me, I'm a real hothead. I can be like super temperamental. If I see something that needs doing, I dive in and do it without thinking about, oh, this is going to make my life more difficult. You know, if I see someone being abused, I am like right there saying the abuser, you need to back off. If I see um, some people struggling and they need help, I dive in and I help. It's who I am. I get in trouble for this all the time. People are always recriminating me. You know, this is your worst quality. I'm like, you know, I used to beat myself up about it. And now I'm like, it's who I am. And when I said, oh, it's who I am. Wait a minute. This is who I am. I learned to start working with this trait instead of denying it, fighting it, oppressing it, abusing it. I learned to work with this trait. And that's when... Like things just started flowing with greater ease for me. 
the more you honor and acknowledge who you are, the more you're able to really work with your natural skills. These are the skills your soul designed for you. These are the skills that you and your soul, like when you start getting in the flow with it, your soul's like, finally, I can really be supportive now. I can be super helpful now. And you get so much more. And then it gets you on your life path with greater ease and things start working better. Now, I'm not saying they work more pleasantly. They just work more according to the plan that you had created for yourself. That, of course, we don't know what it is because we wipe our memories. So in our core, in the very core of our being, we are connected to our soul. We are connected to our eternal state. In our very core being, there is absolute honesty. <clears throat> if you go in there and then send the energy out, you will find many of the things that you use to define yourself as a person, like selfish or crazy or critical or, you know, whatever, all the things that are like, not nice that you use to, oh, I'm frightened. Oh, I never accomplish anything. All of that, you'll realize if you go from your core and you do the filtration system out, these things get pushed further and further out as your true nature of being fills you more and more. So think about this. And today, we are going to connect with our core energy and then send it deep into earth. And then we're going to invite earth to bring the energy up into us so that we have our core connection supported by the power of earth. Let's see what time is it? How long have I been yammering? Oh, good, good. Not too long. Um, Hi. Okay, so if anyone has any questions at any point, you're welcome to answer. Let's see. Oh, I, um, I do not understand your language. Well, Amar, I hope you can get like a language translator or something, but either way, just enjoy the energy. Enjoy the energy. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, so. Let's do a meditation. Um, I don't know if you can hear the birds around me. They are so loud today. They're so loud. And it's nice because um, they were doing some road work here all week, but right now there's no road work. We're in the middle of nowhere and they're working on our road. It's wild. Um, but I hope you can hear the birds and Mitzi is over there with a long, long leash. So she's able to run around the yard. She's got a bowl of water and she just had a nice big dog treat. So, okay, let's do this. All right, everyone. If on occasion you hear me yelling at Mitzi, Mitzi, no. I'm teaching her not to bark at everything that goes by. So just ignore me, like teaching Mitzi to be relaxed in her environment. All right. So everyone, I want you to just sit or stand or lie down, however is comfortable for you in the moment. Or if you're listening to this while doing chores or taking a walk, that's fantastic as well. And give your pot, give your body permission to just chill out, to relax. Give your body permission to release and let go, to flow. You know, we all have micro tensions in our body that we most of the time are not even aware of. Some of them are by habit. You know, if you um, carry a bag over one shoulder, 
you may notice that shoulder gets very tight after a while because it's so used to holding something up. Or if you do a lot of writing, you may find your hand that you are holding pens and pencils with has like muscles that just kind of bulk up and sometimes cramp a bit. Or um, if you, whatever hand you are, you may find the other leg, like if you're right-handed, your left leg, if you're left-handed, your right leg has a tendency to have too much pressure on it because as you're reaching for things with one hand, you're pressing down on the other side to support your motion. You know, there's so many micro tensions that we get in our lives. If you do a lot of driving, your legs and feet and lower back or your shoulders may be feeling the strain of it. Our facial expressions. We have thousands of micro muscles in our face, in our neck, in our head. We spend so much time in our life mimicking the expressions of those around us. You're taught if you want people to know you're serious when you're talking, you maybe furrow your brow, not your head. Or if you want people to know you're happier, you smile. You know, there are so many expressions that we make and we start learning this mimicking process when we're babies and we're looking at our parents and those who care for us. And as children, we mimic these processes as we go forward. So people, you know, wonder like even an adopted child or a foster child may end up looking like their parent because they're forming the muscle groups their parents. We don't think about, most of us, relaxing the micro muscles, but there are chain reactions in our face. If you relax these muscles right here, these connect through a chain to the muscles in the back of your neck, which then connect to the back of your jaw. So if you have a tight jaw, and you're like, oh my God, no matter what I do, it's so stressful to relax these muscles right here and invite the ripple effect to go through. And you're like, wow, my jaw relaxed. Why? Because humans are living mandalas. This is a mandala of energy. You touch one area, and it connects all the way around. You know, acupressure, acupuncture. Just look at the charts and you can see how pressing one area here affects something over there. We are living mandalas, not just in our physical body, which is, again, our physical body is a chakra. That's why we have an aura. That's why we emanate to energy but our energetic body that's around our physical body. So if you want to impact someone over there, you fill yourself with love. You send it through your physical body into your energetic body to their energetic body and it goes through to their physical body. They will feel love. And even though they're across the room, they think no one's looking at them or touching them. They don't realize your energetic bodies are connecting and touching and flowing with love. Ooh, all of that work, I got my shoulder <laughs> a little tight. So excuse me a moment. I don't know what I did. I cramped something in here. <laughs> Lesson learned. There it is. There it is. <laughs> So, think about this. Yes, how couples mutate to look like each other. This is true. Couples who are together for a long time, sometimes people go, oh, are you brother and sister? And they'll go, no, we've been married for 20 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, and people with their animals. Like, 
Lloyd Snaggletooth and I, one time I was like working and scowling and all stressed. And I looked and Lord Snaggletooth was sitting there looking at me and he was mimicking my expression. He was like, ah. and I was like, oh my word, is that what I look like? So he and I just looked at each other and I started smiling and sending love to him. And I watched as he went, oh, oh. <laughs> so if you wonder what you look like, if you have an animal, look at their energy. <coughs> because they will, in their own way, connect with and sometimes mimic what you are expressing. So what I would like you to do today you're welcome to take moments throughout the day and feel your energy. Just feel it and feel where there are tensions and kinks. Understand that if you have a muscle tension, that is no more a definition of who you are than anything. It is just a sore muscle or a tight muscle. Well, if you have an energetic kink in your soul energy, your emotional energy, your intellectual energy, your memory energy, you don't need to define yourself by these either. These are just little kinks that you can work out. And, um, you know, those of you who work with me in Prana Shakti, it's very similar to when we do karmic healing you know, in our, in our cord, in our, at the Atma Chakra, it's a very similar process, except we're sending it through our body's energy. So, oh, there's some remorse here. Oh, there's some recrimination there. Let's uh, send the energy in and send it out. You're like, oh, I don't have anything to be remorseful about. Or, you know what? This is a karmic lesson still in process. Maybe I should just wrap it up, complete it, and release it. So invite your body to flow, to emanate, give your feet permission to relax, invite all the energy that's in your body to just flow down through your body, through your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. Remember, there's no such thing as good energy or bad energy. It's our intention, our connection, our imprint that makes it so. So when we send energy into Earth, no matter what it is, our beloved Gaia, Pakamama, Mother Earth, absorbs it, fills her up. It's like giving her chocolates, it's like giving her roses and love. It doesn't matter what energy you send, she absorbs it converts it to the highest frequency of love, magnifies it, sends it out to all of your brothers and sisters of the planet. So invite whatever energy you have, even if it's hatred, rancor, disease, whatever, send it to Mother Earth. She will purify it and magnify it and share it with others. As your body's energy is flowing through you to earth, the top of your head naturally, instinctively opens up, inviting all the beautiful cosmic divine love from the angels, the universe, the stars, your soul, your soul family, your guides, aliens, whomever of the highest frequency of love comes flowing in through the light, airy top of your head, flowing through your mind, filling your head, flowing down through your neck, through your shoulders, through your body, your hips, down your legs, deep into earth. If you like, you may invite your guardian angel or someone you love who's non-physical to come and nestle in the top of your crown chakra. Be the gatekeeper so that anything of the frequency of love and caring and well-being for you is welcome to flow in through your body, 
And anything below that frequency is invited, just as our beloved Pacamama, to be turned into divine love, amplified, and then filled you. Or it is welcome to go away. Mitzi, Mitzi, no, sweetheart, no. That's our neighbor. She'll learn. She's still learning to trust. So invite the energy to flow through you. Invite the energy of your soul to come in into the core of your head, the core of your crown chakra, through the core of your being. If you feel at all queasy or vertigo or pressure or pain, give it permission to relax. This is just your body's way of going, wait a minute. I'm not familiar with this being so open and yummy. It's powerful. So invite your being to just relax, resolve, and absorb. Flow, flow, flow and glow as this energy flows through you deep into earth. Feel this energy. Some of you may see it with colors. Whatever colors you see and whatever kind of texture or density or lightness really shows the nature of your current connection to your soul and your soul's feeling of what energy is best for you and what you are most receptive to receive. So invite this energy to flow in the light and airy top of your head. Let it swirl around your mind, flowing into your third eye, sparking your pineal gland where your third eye and your crown chakra meet in the center of your brain, getting all that pineal gland lit up because that sends energy into your nervous system as well. So it becomes not just energetic etherically, but energetic physically. And it hits into all of your feelings, your physical, your nerves. It sends energy all through your brain sparking into your senses, smell, taste, touch, sight third eye sight, as well as eyeball sight. It sparks up the energy going into your organs, your heart, your throat, your physical throat, as well as all of your major chakras, your minor chakras. When the pineal gland sparks, it sends like electric brilliance all through your being. Invite your soul to fill your mind, to flow through it, fill your crown chakra, fill your third eye, spark up your pineal gland, fill it bright, bright, so that your entire body, all of the chakras, etheric and physical, all the mandalas within you become electrically magnified. The areas you feel most connected to at this space in your life are the ones that will feel most, wow, lit up. And then send this energy out of your body to your skin. You have nerve endings in your skin. Send it to your skin and out to your energetic body that is around your physical body. So that you're going from your thousands of chakras in your body to your major chakras, your nervous system, your organs, your flesh, your body chakra, 
to your energetic chakras surrounding your body. Let it spark, spark. You may even see all around you lines and systems sparking all around, like you're in the center of fireworks or crackling or cloud lightning. When you look up in the sky and clouds have lightning rippling all through them. Invite this energy to flow not just above you and around you, but beneath you. Because your soul's energy, your body's energy, your etheric body is not just above, around, in front and behind, but also below. Just by connecting with your total body, you are automatically grounded. You are one with our beautiful earth. Let this energy go in. Feel where your soul's body, your energetic body connects to the air around you, connecting to the environment around you, and the subtle shifts as it goes down, connecting through the ground around you. Certainly each chakra in your body is connected in mandala to your energetic body around you. So the part of your energetic body closest to the crown will feel most connected to your soul, sacred, divine, angelic energy. The part of your energy connected to your third eye is extremely visionary and alert and aware. The eyes in the back of your head, the just knowing, the sensing, walking into a room and knowing the ambiance all around you. Going out from your throat is when you fully express yourself and everyone absorbs and understands because your throat chakra going all through your energetic body, connecting to their energetic bodies and absorbing in. Your heart chakra, your solar plexus and sacral and your root, which goes so deep into earth. And your soul's energy, your sacred energy, your etheric body around you in earth where your root chakra and your energetic body meet deep in earth, below your physical body. This is still you. And now again, invite all the beautiful soul energy directly from your soul, your guardian angel, the highest love to flow in through your very core being blowing and emanating out all the way down, down. And you feel when you go beneath your feet, you're still in your body, down into the ground where your body's energy and your soul's energy and earth Gaia meet and create a mandala that is just for you, a gorgeous sacred mandala, your soul's pure energy, your energetic body, your physical body, earth itself, and Gaia. Connect and become one. Now invite this mandala energy to rise back up. It's okay if the other energy is flowing because we are energy masters. Invite this mandala energy to rise up through the core 
on up and fill you. Nourish your soul's energy each step of the way up, up through your etheric body in earth, up through the bottom of your feet, meeting your root chakra. This combination of Gaia, your pure soul, earth, your energetic body rising up, feeding your energy, nourishing you up through your hips, up to, through your root chakra, your sacral chakra, where your guardian angel loves to connect with you and give you messages. Nourish this connection, send it up through your solar plexus chakra and your organs, nourishing your physical body up through your solar plexus so your actions are so grounded and powered and divinely supported by Gaia, your soul, up, up through your lungs, for your breath, up through your heart center, your throat, to your mouth, your cheeks, your eyes, your third eye, sparking again your beautiful pineal gland and feel the intensity of this earth soul mandala energy sparking your pineal gland, again, sending it all through your body. How is this compared to the experience we just had? It's delicious. It is powerful. and up through your crown chakra to your guardian angel who is able to absorb this wonderful powerhouse energy, magnify it, multiply it, make it even more magnificent and send it up to the angels, to your guides so that they can enjoy the essence of this beautiful Gaia soulful mandala of energy, something they could never, ever claim without your support. What a gift we're sending up through your body to them. Not just through your physical body. This energy flow around your etheric body to them. up from earth around you, up through you and out, up through you to your pineal gland, through your physical, through your etheric, and up. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you. Some of you are sharing me beautiful messages. Thank you. Oh, Amar, thanks. I was just a little sore. I just got a little cramp. <laughs> oh, you guys, beautiful messages. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, practice this. Practice this. If you're going for a walk, Play with it. You don't need to do the whole thing. You can just say, you know what? Soul, come on in and spark my pineal gland. And let's connect with the nature around me. Play with it. Play with it. The whole point of working your energy as active is to play with it. Send it out in different ways. Invite your soul to come in through your core and fill you. It's so healing. It's so good to be reminded who you are, you know, play with it, have so much fun with it. For certainly, the more you fill yourself with joy, the easier it is to absorb all the love that you deserve. And I guarantee you, you will find so much love. And you'll be like, wow, the love with the birds is one kind, the love with the plants, the love with the fairies, the love with 
Gaia, the love with rocks, the love with the angels. There's so many beautiful, you know, resonances of love. Play with them. They're gifts for you. So I thank you. I thank you so much. And whew, it is so hot. It's like 90 degrees here. And there is no breeze. So I'm going to um, actually get back to gardening. So I'm going to be like super filthy within five minutes. But I wanted to uh, let you all know, tomorrow, Sunday, uh, Jean-Marie Klitzner, who is a sacred anatomy practitioner. So all of this, the etheric energetic body around us, this is her specialty. She's amazing. At 3 p.m. Sunday, uh, what is today? The, the ah, Today is the 27th, so Sunday the 28th of June at 3 p.m. Jean-Marie and I, she also is a seer like me. She also sees the future. So we're going to talk about what we see in the present and the future. Um, some of this stuff, you're going to be like, yeah, 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 we all know that. But what we're going to do, because Jean-Marie is such a powerful um, visionary on non-physical dimension, is we're going to set timer. And at first, we'll talk a little bit about what's happening now in the physical and what we see in the, like, what's going to be the next year, the next five years. But um, I'm actually going to hold up little signs so you know if you're watching again in the future. Okay, I want to skip through all this so we get to whatever. Um, what we're going to talk about for the majority of it is our etheric spiritual visions of the future for Earth and for humanity. Uh, so all the other stuff is just to like make sure everyone understands the steps to get there. But most of it, we're going to be sharing our visions of the beauty of the future so that we can manifest it for the now. And we will be pulling in our entire, as Jean-Marie calls it, the sacred anatomy. I call it the etheric body. It's, you know, the, the you that's all around you and within you and above and below you to manifest, you know, the, we see several possible futures. We will talk about them. But the more we are all connecting with the best, the more we can bring it, you know, quickly to us now. Um, on Monday at three o'clock, I am going to live stream with a panel of non-white, sacred, energetic healers, teachers, sacred people. Um, and we're going to live stream about so many white spiritual leaders, healers, teachers, practitioners are either not sure like where they're supposed to stand with the Black Lives Movement, Black Lives Matter Movement, or is this a spiritual issue? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what it's like for your spiritual peers of color when white people say, yes, I'm here for you, or no, I'm not here for you. So this will not be anything for recrimination or anything like that. They're just going to be sharing their feelings in response to what like pale, pasty white people like me say and do. Um, and if you are someone who is, you know, black, brown, Asian, and you wish to join, um, I'm going to be promoting this later today. And I'll put the live stream link. So if you want to join on Zoom and share your voice, we would love to hear you. Uh, if you're white, you know, you're welcome to come on to the live stream. But we're going to be listening. Um, so you can be on the live stream on Facebook. You can join in the Zoom if you want to share your support. Um, but we pale pasty people, we're going to be listening to our brothers and sisters as, as they open their hearts to help us be of better support with what they actually need. Um, and then Wednesday night, 7 PM, the librarians are going to come through and channel and, um, they have some fun stuff coming up on how we can like 
help manifest a better future. Um, so I'll put links to all of that here in the comments. So I thank you guys. I thank you, thank you, thank you. You all are amazing and beautiful. Remember to love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Invite your light to shine and see what happens. It will be good, I promise. Okay, my guides are saying, don't tell them it'll be good. It'll be interesting. I can promise that. <laughs> All right.